here's our revitalized and revamped look into how to play each of the nations. This video is going to cover the Water Nation, an economic powerhouse nation, just packed to the gills with food. And they have a very flexible opening turn start with mer people in their large card passive. They don't even need barracks if they've got a lake adjacent to their capital. Just throw your general on there, make it the first tile you purchase, and then you've got soldiers to open up the game with. But on top of that, water has multiple strategies. Whether you're going to attack the coast or you're going to create your own rivers, water is very versatile and has very few poor matchups. They have a pretty good mid-game spike with their military and have the resources to back up a large-scale set of combat while also bolstering their other aspects of their game. Whether it's their economy, uh, contending for bosses, contending for the middle of the board, water is a powerhouse nation. Let's take a dive into their other abilities and how they attack the board. Here we are taking a look at Water's abilities and starting off with their big card. Something you want to look for uh, with Water is, one, you don't really care about what turn position you are. 10-10 all the way through 2020, you're really flexible with your options, especially if you can take advantage of your first bullet point on your large card, Mer People. If you've got a lake adjacent to your capital, you're going to be able to purchase that with your general and spawn soldiers from there as if you had a barracks once per turn. Uh, lakes are inherently what we want to go for because they give us defensive bonus. They used to give us a resource buff as well, but that was just far too powerful. And so we're looking for corners such as this. You know, it's not too daunting. Perhaps water is able to, to sleek through the bands. Two deserts here. This is definitely going to warrant a sa uh, sand ban. And so water is able to get through. And we've got a lake directly adjacent to our capital. Our general moves in, and we're able to expand on the board. We want to make sure that we uh, acquire some building material tiles in the opening turns because building materials is where we're going to struggle. And we've got our ability separated in this way for a good reason. And that's because water has uh, two strategies that they can really go for. Uh, and, and that's kind of outlined inside of their large card here. We can travel the length of the river in one turn. Well, if you'll notice, there's no river on the board. Well, that's because the water nation actually makes it. And that's something that we're going to take a look at here. But if we look at their other generic tier ones here, it's all about defending and manipulating our corner in order to be more economically beneficial for us. Placing a second resource building on a lake tile, placing a second resource building on a field tile. So we really, really like food. Uh, and that's because we're going to be able to produce a lot of soldiers with that food when we get to the mid and the late game. We've got our tier two monument, which is going to help us bridge the gap in terms of building material production versus food production. It's a newer card that hasn't been tested too many times, and I think it's going to be a very, very powerful one. It's going to be a great landmark in the middle of the board that no one can attack until they are tier three. And that's a really powerful effect. On top of that, just generically, we've got fertile footing, which is a powerful card that i'm surprised hasn't been looked at for a nerf yet and i'm saying that when i'm the only one that really does these nerfs but still it is a very powerful card wherever your general is sitting you're making twice as many resources on that tile doesn't matter if it's a swamp or an oasis you're going to be making twice as many resources and then on top of that if we're netting 30 food a turn and we got one barracks on the front line and we can typically only make one army well for an extra one food we can train as many soldiers as possible from there uh, our tier three is once again more about manipulating the board. We've got turning a desert into an oasis, aka combo that with fertile footing, and you've got an economic powerhouse there. Or we can also devastate our opponent's economy with where'd all the water go, turning their food producing tiles to deserts and swamps, or heavy runoff, which is going to remove the structures on them, defensive fortifications or resource buildings. Really, really powerful stuff. But how do we win the game, really? Water is really good at getting the 50-50 resource mark and acquiring uh, 10 armies. They're pretty fast at that, but they are even better at accomplishing their quests. And so we have two quests to choose from. Own six river tiles to acquire a one-win condition, or own two tiles on three different coastlines to acquire one win condition. Well, the thing is, no matter what corner you're in, you've got two coastlines at your disposal. So if I own this lake, this desert, this field, and that forest, that's two out of three coastlines done. And so if you're doing the math here, that means I need to either go here, 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 or here. So what is that going to require me to do? Well, I could eliminate an opponent, and then I've got pretty much free reign on two tiles after that. But how else am I going to do that? As water's not a very aggressive nation. Well, we can either go with our abilities uh, and play for the late game, and we can be fairly aggressive on there, but we're, we're a little slow here. We've got abilities like Coastal Breeze, which give us an attacking bonus when on the outside of the map. 
Additionally, we also get to purchase a coastal tile for half price. So this is really, really good for our 10 10 start. On top of that, we get soldier supplementation, extra movement, defensive structure removal with high tide. We've got lots of abilities in our kit that allow us to fight on the outside. But the problem with that, a little bit of weakness there, is a lot of opponents can take advantage of the middle of the board. If I'm not really playing for the middle of the board, then that is a severe weakness here. But the main ability that is going to allow us to achieve this quest is Storm the Beaches. We can teleport from one coast to another coast. And so whereas eliminating an opponent is very difficult to achieve for water in the late game, I can use Storm the Beaches from this desert position, and it's going to teleport me from that desert to this forest and attack an opponent across the board. And that's one of my favorite aspects of this nation is they're one of the few elements that can actually attack the opponent in the opposing corner. And I think that's really, really powerful for them. So the ability will usually get them that one tile, and then they simply need to attack the field on either side here, and that would achieve them their quest. On top of that, we've got our river strategy that we can go with here and they have less abilities but these abilities are very impactful first off tier two our station our, our bread and butter ability for this is we're essentially going to get three river tiles right out of the gate converting two of our own tiles into river tiles we can also convert a neutral or an enemy owned tile into a river and this is going to allow us to get a movement buff if we are in a river tile we can end on any river tile so this is a lot of extra movement on the board and then when we get to tier three, we can extend the river tile in any one direction and eliminate all structures and units on that tile, which is just going to be free grabs for us. Uh, and then we get to our passive here, tiles taken by attacks from river tiles. So if we're just going down the river, down the river, down the river, it's getting longer and longer and longer each time. And so if you're going with a river strat on water, your tier threes are pretty much locked in for you. You've got Let the Rivers Run Red. You've got When Did That River Get Longer and Mortgage Cry. There's a little bit of flexibility in here. If you're worried about potentially get, not getting a second win condition, then you can slide in a couple of these other abilities up here. But that's usually what you're locked into. But the River Strat does give us some flexibility in our Tier 2 stage because the only Tier 2 River ability is the Wouldn't You Like to Know Weather Boy, which gives us free grabs up here. And I'm usually going to go for Fertile Footing and the Landmark Trade Center or not the landmark, the monument card here. I think that's going to be your best case scenario for your tier two build in water. For tier one, I think it's very hard to go wrong with Fertile Crescent and Flood as two staple abilities. And then it's really all about, am I going to the coast or am I playing for the middle of the board? And if I'm playing for the middle of the board, which is typically a river strat, it's very important to play around the temple. Because if I don't take these tier 3 abilities, or I don't think I'm going to get to be able to use these tier 3 abilities effectively, or maybe I've got an opponent that is able to turn several of my tiles that are river into something else, well, guess what the temple is going to allow us to do? It's going to allow us to repurchase that Wouldn't You Like to Know Weather Boy ability, and then allow us to spawn three more river tiles. We could accomplish our quest without fighting a single opponent, and I think that's really, really cool for water. You're a defensive powerhouse because lakes add to your defensive dice roll. You're an economic powerhouse. In the mid stages of the game, you're making so much food that you can contend with any forces on the board. And then you've got tons of mobility with river. In my opinion, it's the better strat, but coastal is more aggro. And so it's getting a lot of attention from a lot of people. Water is an incredibly powerful nation, and I hope you have fun with it. So that is the look into water.